Uh, why? Okay, it looks like we're live. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Moneroversary 2020. Um, this is Monero's sixth birthday, and we made cake, we made ice cream, we can't share it with anybody because we're all stuck at home, so I hope you bought your own cake and ice cream. Um, but the I, I, Diego Salazar, most of you may know me as Rarar, uh, which does a couple of things for Monero here and there. I'm the first main event. I'm going to be talking about the history of Monero. I've made a little presentation that's pretty nice. But we just we just definitely want to say uh, thank you to everybody who is going to be a part of these events. Um, if you uh, don't know what's going to be happening, we have various places where we have posted the schedule. Like uh, the Revua has it on revua-monero.com. It's probably posted on Reddit somewhere. We have a meta issue in the GitHub. Those Some of those links are going to be posted here uh, fairly quickly into the YouTube chat. If somebody could do that, that would be fantastic. Um, but we got a lot of stuff going on. We got a lot of stuff planned. But I'm here to open this up. I'm here to make sure that uh, I'm the hype man, you know, before the main act. I'm here to make sure that everybody's excited and and uh, ready to go. So I'm um, without further ado. Oh, uh, let me just give a small introduction to myself for those who don't know me. Uh, my name is Diego Salazar. I um, work for the core team. I do some various things that they want me to do. They say, Diego, get this done or get that done. But mostly my uh, my job is kind of poking them to get stuff done. So <laughs> you're welcome. Um, uh, I also do, you know, a little bit of web work, some design work and uh, whatever else I can sink my hands into for Monero. You may have seen me around. Maybe not. Maybe I'm just being a little bit self-important here. Um, so that's me. Let's go ahead and get us started with uh, this thingy here. Just a second. Let me take a second. But I'll share my screen. Okay. I'm going to share my screen with you guys. And it's going to be Whoopow. Okay. Tell me you guys see that, right? I'm, I'm assuming that everybody is seeing this right now. Yeah. Okay. I switched to the YouTube and that is live. Great. So... I am going to walk us through the history of Monero. Not all of us were there, was there. Not all of us were there when Monero first started. <clears throat> Some of us uh, had other things, had lives, weren't yet nerds. You know, whatever the, uh, the, whatever the case may be. We may have heard bits and pieces, little bits of rumors. You know, some people, they have a, a teeny tiny idea just from what they've been able to pick up here and there. But the history of Monero is kind of a fascinating thing. Uh, and when you start digging deep, you know, I put in the time and the effort to look through the old forum posts. And I was able to kind of relive Monero's birth in real time be just because of the way that it's preserved in some of these uh, Bitcoin talk forum posts and uh, super old like Reddit posts and stuff. So let's go ahead and get started with the history of Monero. So all of this started a long time ago in a forum far, far away, six years ago, because it's Monero's sixth birthday. Um, so I guess not too long ago, but you know, there was this guy this anonymous guy, this is, I think, as accurate a representation picture as we have been able to find. If you Google Nicholas von Saberhagen, this is probably what you will get. Uh, no, we just took this off a thing. We have no idea what this guy looks like. He's completely anonymous, similar to um, Satoshi. And some people were like, oh, look, look, look. If you if you switch the S in Saberhagen and the N in Nicholas, then you get SN like Satoshi Nakamoto. Maybe it's the same guy. Um, I mean, <laughs> probably not, but the idea is that after Bitcoin was created, uh, some people started to see that it was not super private. Even Satoshi himself was like, you know, at some point in the future, like you may be able to take advantage of kind of like a ring signature type thing, add a little bit more privacy. Um, and so somebody, some anonymous individual uh, started working on that and he created a a protocol that became known as crypto notes and this was a paper that was released to the public that was like oh so um you you will probably be able to get more privacy on the blockchain if you add things like ring signatures and if you use mandatory um if you use stealth addressing 
Um, and so he kind of laid it all out there and what that might mean for people. And the first implementation of this was Bitcoin. And <laughs> the story of Bitcoin is a very wonderful and funny story. We're going to be uh, poking at it a little bit here. For those of you who haven't heard of Bitcoin, um, it actually surprisingly uh, was a scam. And for those of you who may just be new to Monero, it may surprise you to know that Monero's origins are also a scam. Uh, we don't worry, Monero is not a scam any longer, but that's how it started. And so this little crazy twisty story of lies and deceit and, you know, some weird mafia somewhere, maybe, uh, it all starts with this, with this Bitcoin. So the funny thing is, Bitcoin was launched extremely soon after the release of the Crypto Note white paper. And so everyone is thinking the only way that somebody can take what was um, codified in this uh, protocol paper and put it out so soon after that is if they were kind of working hand in hand. And even on the uh, Crypto Note website, if you were to go to CryptoNote.org and poke around, uh, <laughs> uh, it's it's quite a it's quite a little place to go visit, uh, and it's got little pieces of history that they have their own form there as well. the The Crypto Note developers, so I'm speaking like the people who develop Crypto Note, the protocol, and the people who develop Bitcoin as as separate people for now. But uh, there are many people who think they're the same people. The Crypto Note developers do admit that they worked closely with the Bitcoin developers to put out kind of this as a reference implementation for CryptoNote. But um, there was a there was a problem. As people started looking through the Bitcoin blockchain, they saw that 80% of the coins had already been mined. Over 80%. It was actually like 81% had already been mined. So there was only 20% of the coins left to be distributed to people who um, discovered Bitcoin later. But it was something that basically everyone had just discovered. They're like, uh, where did this 80% go? So when we're talking, they're like, is this a pre-mine? Uh, for When we usually talk pre-mines, you know, people start getting antsy and weird if one even exists at all, especially from the Monero community. But, you know, when we start looking at, okay, 10% is pre-mined, 15% is pre-mined, you know, they start getting ultra, ultra mega greedy when it's like 20% is pre-mined, 25%. So I want you to think 80%, 80% of Bitcoin was already in the hands of somebody. Now, who... (laughs) And probably a very a uh, uh, one individual or a very tiny small group of people. So if Bitcoin was to get anywhere, if it was to become worth anything, one person or a teeny tiny group of of people, maybe less than like ten people, is going to be very very rich. Um, and it's actually quite funny if you go to the Crypto Note uh, website, they talk very highly of Bitcoin because they're in in league with these guys and they're like. Um, you know, a Bitcoin is the very first successful uh, coin to reach mass adoption. And, you know, they, they try super, super hard to shill all of this. It's pretty fantastic. But here's the problem. Here's the problem with it. Um, so what, what Bitcoin did to try to get around this, they're like, oh, well, you see, the reason 80% of this has been mined already. The reason, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> The reason 80% of of all the Bitcoin is already gone is because Bitcoin has actually existed for five years, some something along like those lines. Uh, no, 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 for two years. Sorry, because this was released in 2014. Um, it's 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 been a thing since 2012 on the dark net. That's why. That's why nobody nobody has heard of Bitcoin. That's why 80% of it is is gone because. Uh, Everybody on everybody on the darknet has known about Bitcoin for two years and they've been mining. So it's actually pretty, pretty well distributed amongst all the people on the darknet. So people start searching on the darknet, right? They're like, uh, OK, you know, darknet, sure. Um, but th- the big issue is that nobody on the darknet also had heard of Bitcoin. <laughs> You start searching through different darknet forums and and you just start searching for any trace of this thing called Bitcoin and it just doesn't exist. So people come to the um, fairly obvious conclusion that this was not the truth, 
that somebody just took a massive pre mine and is trying to pass it off. And there's a lot of evidence, not just that, not just that the story doesn't line up with reality. <clears throat> there's a lot of different little mini stories. And there is a wonderful, fantastic blog post of one guy just super breaking it down into detail. Like he finds out the white paper, it shows that it was digitally signed um, in the year 2012 to prove that, you know, CryptoNote has existed since 2012. But it was signed by the person's uh, personal computer clock, which if you don't know, you can change the clock settings on your computer to any date at any time. So um, he, he shows that that he also shows that using certain metadata techniques, he saw that the paper was actually made in 2014. He shows that the footnotes in the footnotes where they have references there are some references to things that don't exist until 2013 or 2014, certain posts or certain articles or something. And, and he's like, how is this possible that you made this paper in 2012 when some of the references that you have don't exist until 2013, 2014? So uh, everyone kind of rightly concluded that no, um, yeah, Bitcoin is, <laughs> Bitcoin is a scam. This, this, the, the, there's super greedy people. None of this makes sense. All of this is garbage. Uh, we're not going to have anything to do with Bitcoin. Uh, but it's, it was actually very surprising, even after this was well established several years in the future, up to like two or three years ago, Bitcoin was still kind of in decent standings on the, you know, crypto races in terms of what price everything is. Uh, <clears throat> they were much higher than everyone thought they would be. It's like top 20. So, you know, somebody still made a good amount of money off of this. Uh, good for them. They, they ran a successful scam. But now we're left with, please excuse my, my pun here. Now we're left with a problem. There's a really big power vacuum. Oh, vacuum, you get it? Yeah. Yeah, there's a really big power vacuum here that is left because we have open source code. We have a uh, anonymously given paper. So like it's it's open for everyone and anyone of this new exciting technology. And the surprising thing was, uh, despite how poorly this Bitcoin scam was done, the the actual math, the actual cryptography was pretty rock solid. You know, we come to find out in later years there's weaknesses and we patch those up, but as best we could to our ability currently. But the some of that stuff was pretty rock solid and the implementation was, you know, it was okay. So now we have this power vacuum where the 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 real first coin to market with the first mover advantage is definitely and undeniably a scam and we have what's it going to be who's going to fork it first who's going to make something first who's going to you know who's going to be the first real non scam to market um enter the first one to market is one that is known as Bitmonero. Bitmonero. So, so for those of you who don't know, Monero means coin in Esperanto. Um, I know we have this little phrase, Monero means money, just like the movie that just came out. And it's a, it's a cute little phrase, uh, but it's not factually correct. Uh, Monero actually means coin. So if you take Bitmonero, that translates to Bitcoin. So this guy was trying to uh, be pretty clever in what he's doing. <clears throat> So there's this guy. We got this new guy on the scene, okay? This new guy is thankful for today. He's the guy that starts Bitmonero. He's like, all right, guys, I'm the first new guy. I mean, I mean I'm the first new uh, uh, crypto note coin to market. Uh, my thing is Bitmonero. Uh, please jump on board. And because he was the first, a lot of people did jump on board. And this is where we start getting several of our um, OG Monero people, people such as Taco Time, uh, Fluffy Pony, they they get on board in these very early days and they're like, oh yeah, this looks pretty cool and it's not Bitcoin, so it's not a scam. Um, sounds great. Nothing is really known about Thankful for Today. He's just a pseudonymous guy. Uh, uh, even within like the Bitcoin talk forums, he's not known. He has not established himself a reputation. He just kind of appears out of nowhere going, look, here is Bitmonero. This is my thing. And as time goes on, uh, he decides that, you know, uh, this is a community driven coin. This is something that everyone can get involved with. But he starts making some unpopular uh, dictator for life type decisions where he's like, oh, 
it would be great if we were merge mined with Bitcoin. And the crowd was kind of silent and they were like, mm, what if we didn't do that? What if we didn't do that because Bitcoin is a scam? What if we didn't merge mine with Bitcoin? I think this bit Monero can stand on its own two shoulders, right? We're, the, we're supposed to be an honest fork and we don't want to have any association with this uh, dishonest thing. But thankful for today is like, um, I, I, I want this to be merged mine. But eventually after he people pushed back a lot, there was kind of an informal vote and people decided, no, we're not going to have this be merged mine with Bitcoin. And he's like, okay, okay, we won't be merge mine with Bitcoin. He comes back some time later with some new code that's like, here it is, guys, the merge mine with Bitcoin. And everyone's like, we we didn't ask for this. We didn't want this. In fact, we we had a vote and you acknowledge that this was not going to be a thing. So um, what is currently known as kind of the, the current core team softly took over the the the, the currency. It it's a it's an often quoted thing that Monero was forked from BitMonero, but this is actually technically not true. There was no fork that took place in terms of like a hard fork. Um, I guess if you consider the thing that Thankful for Today submitted as code to be merged mine with Bitcoin, if people would have downloaded that and used that, then yes, that is uh, its own separate fork. But nobody updated their software, so like it kind of they just the leadership just kind of changed. And to be honest, the, that core team had already been doing most of the work anyways because thankful for today would kind of pop in once a week and say a couple of lines mostly about to merge mine with bitcoin and then disappear for a while and when people would try to talk with him he wouldn't he wouldn't really respond um <clears throat> and after the community decided you know we're we're not about this whole bitcoin thing and the fact that you did this uh, we we're we're kind of starting to get some bad vibes from you man um he he went up and he disappeared and nobody has seen or heard from him since. So <laughs> Monero has a very, uh, it has some similarities to the start of Bitcoin. And it has some things that are quite, quite different. Uh, the similarities are, we don't know who started Bitcoin. And that guy uh, disappeared. Uh Satoshi Nakamoto. But the, the thing is, he wasn't a scammer. So that's where the similarities end. Uh, we don't know who started Monero. But and that and that guy disappeared. But that guy was probably a scammer. So that that's kind of where the similarities end. It's just kind of funny. We we share we're we're one of the only cryptocurrencies that also has an anonymous founder. Um, but ours was was kind of the worst. So eventually, as you probably can guess, judging by the fact that we are the Moneroversary and not the Bit Moneroversary, uh, the Bit was dropped from the name, and we just keep the term Monero. So to anyone who actually speaks Esperanto in real life, like a nerd, if you say "pay me in Monero," um, you're actually saying "paying pay me in coin," and that's what the other person is going to hear until Monero becomes kind of ubiquitous and everywhere. Um, so I don't know. I guess like some some like old timey. Uh, fairy tale or fantasy world like all oh, coin so maybe it, you're just trying to sound like a nerd um but monero was not the only one other coins began to appear not even sometimes several days or, or a week or so past um bit monero's entrance and if you don't recognize these coins that's for good reason uh, none of these, some of these may be around. I actually don't know if any of these are still around anymore, but there's things like Boolberry, Phantom Coin, Quasar Coin. Um, there was actually one guy, Quasar Coin has a funky story behind it. There was actually one guy who was like, I'm going to relaunch Monero without the thankful for today. Um, and he's like, and this is the real Monero. And there was a huge backlash. It's like, no, uh, Bit Monero that is taken over by the new core team is the new Monero. So he renamed his thing to Quasar Coin. What we now suspect to be the case is that um, most or all of these coins were started by the Bitcoin people. Maybe not all of them, maybe not 100% of them, but most, if not all of these, were started by the Bitcoin people as they saw, okay, Bitcoin has failed to capture a large audience and make us super rich, even though a few years later that this was definitely not the case. So hopefully those scammers held on to their Bitcoin coins. Um, let's go ahead and make a bunch of new ones under different pseudonyms so people can't link us together as also trying to, um, you know, make a new Bitcoin alternative because Bitcoin was a scam. 
you know, there will be small pre mines, but you know, they won't be anywhere near eighty percent. We may have we may have been too greedy there, guys. So let's go ahead and go down to other pre mines. So we have all these other coins popping up. Honey Penny, um, which I Googled and couldn't find a logo for, just a bunch of weird pictures. So uh, <laughs> um, which are not displayed here. There was a lot of these coins that start appearing. And uh back in the day. The big question was, which coin is going to be the coin, the crypto note coin? Which coin is going to be the crypto note coin? Um, and CryptoNote.org kind of had a list of, well, these are the coins that implemented our protocol. And they had, surprisingly, they had some trouble picturing why they should add Mon Monero, even though it was the first one. And they're like, oh, well, you know, there's a community split and we don't really know who's who. So, um but they had no problem like, oh, yeah, Quasar coin. Let's add Phantom coin. Let's add Boolberry. These are these are crypto note coins. Um, so uh, if, once again, I highly recommend there is a blog post that please contact me afterwards and I will share that blog post with you. It's quite the trip. It's quite the rabbit hole. Just how far these guys are willing to go. There is evidence to show that these coins are actually linked together or and, you know, websites. There's a lot of evidence to show the websites are set up by the same person or the same group. Um, back in the day, it was who's going to be the one, who's going to be the big one. And even though to us it seems pretty obvious because we've never heard of those previous ones and we know Monero pretty well, it wasn't quite so obvious back then because like, ooh, this, the first one, BitMonero, had a big disagreement and a community split from the developers. So maybe its future is kind of left up in the air. You know, when there's a big split, like, you know, Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, and then like, uh, it kind there's something that something loses legitimacy somewhere because it's i mean in a way even though it shows decentralization it also says we're maybe i want to hold off on getting into this because maybe it's going to further split or we don't know and you know people were very used to the whole little teeny tiny shit coins trying to uh carve out something for themselves mentality so was monero going to go anywhere nobody knew back then um i mean we know now because six years later we're still here. Six years later, we are celebrating Monero's uh, sixth birthday, and we are saying happy birthday to you, which we will all sing together here in a little bit. Um, we are eating our cake and ice cream, and we're very happy. So uh, I know I'm scheduled for 30 minutes, uh, but this is the end of the presentation. I can go ahead and take a couple of questions and answer them best I can. I was not there, personally. I came... January was it 2016 or 2017 one of those two so a few years later um but I have done tons and tons and tons of research uh and if I am wrong in something it's one of the people who was there so we do have some people who were there uh they can probably correct me so well, let's go ahead and get my screen off so you can see my beautiful face again yay clap 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 uh thank you so much Diego for this presentation um is there any questions is there any questions about thankful for today about Monero, how it started, why it is the way it is now, who were the core team back then? Anything. I'm going to give just a little bit for people to type because I know some people are slow typers. But if I don't get anything in about a minute, then I can go ahead and hand it back to Justin. And we could be all done here. I guess if, if no one else has a question, I have a quick question, Diego. What do you think are the, you know, after the very early history of Monero, what are the major three things that has happened in Monero's history since? Um, most of them are probably privacy improvements. So like there, I guess there's a couple ways we could take this question. If there is a like in a community sense, what's happened within the community and also within a technological sense. Within a technological sense, I'd say one of the biggest, if not the biggest game changer was the addition of Ring CT. So when I first talked about the original CryptoNote protocol, I talked about the addition of Ring signatures and also the addition of stealth addressing. But I did not mention Ring CT because that was not part of the original spec. Um, Ring CT was added later by Moner the Monero Research Lab. Uh, I think Shen, uh, not, yeah, Shen Nother, who is no longer with us. Uh, Shen was the one who uh, worked on Ring CT, and we eventually added that. Uh, that was 
not actually audited, even though it was a really big change because I don't think Monero had the money to do so at the time. But um, Ring CT was the big thing that uh, uh, obfuscates amounts. So now amounts cannot be hit. Now, now amounts can be hidden. Before that, it was kind of done in a denominational way where oh, like five Moneros, 10 Moneros. Oh, look, Serang is here and he could probably answer more of those questions. Um, but Ring CT was the first big addition that hides amounts, and it's now pretty uh, mission critical to what we do because as a paper that came out a few years ago from uh, Andrew Miller came to show, without Ring CT, there were pretty accurate ways of defining with very high certainty which out was the actual output in a ring. But these things are much less applicable to us now that we have Ring CT. Uh, the second biggest thing that probably happened was the addition of bulletproofs you know swapping that out for the uh for the uh proving mechanism that we had in place at the time because the addition of ring ct raised the transaction size by a huge amount it was by a massive amount that the uh that ring ct raised the transaction size so uh, it was a big hit on our scalability. It was a big hit on our transaction sizes and Bulletproofs brought that down dramatically, um, over 80%, I believe. Uh, and if I'm wrong, somebody flick me and tell me, um, the, that, that was added, man, has it been a couple of years now? A year and a half, maybe it, it was, it was quite some time ago. It's quite, it's not the spring chicken that it used to be. It's not the big news that it used to be because now it's kind of old. That now, you know, Monero has bulletproofs. Um, I would say those are the like two gigantic pillars technologically that uh, Monero added. We've done a lot of things along the way, uh, a lot of little improvements, little tweaks, making things better here and there. You know, I wasn't around, like, actually, when I first came in, the GUI was kind of freshly released and out of beta. But for, you know, there's a common joke in the Monero community, when GUI, when GUI, just because for the longest time, Monero was CLI only, um, actually for many, many, uh, many couple of years, it was CLI only. And other people, they, other people had it easy because they would just kind of fork the Bitcoin wallets and, you know, change the, the logos and stuff and they were good to go. But Monero wanted a couple of things, you know, Monero wanted it to, their wallet to be, you know, built from the ground. Well, first of all, it had to be built from the ground up because it's for Monero, but they decided, you know, if we're going to do this, we're going to do this right. We want to make sure something, there's something that's nice, good, looks good, it's usable, um, <clears throat> not based off of any derpy technology. So uh, when the GUI came out, I guess for the people that were there at the time, it was also a big achievement. And when it came out at beta, they're like, yay, the GUI is available and ready for everyone to use. Um, it, it's, it's a little more difficult to see that as an achievement um, I'm not trying to take away the work from anybody who, who does that, but because the GUI is kind of still in progress, you know, Bulletproofs is kind of done. It's checkmarked. It's in our thing. Ring CT is kind of done. The GUI is still improving. The GUI is still going. So, um, yeah, for, for that reason, it, it may not make the list as strongly as the others. But, you know, community-wise, we've had changes within the core team. Community-wise, we've moved from the core team Back in the day, the core team were actually similar to core teams of other coins where they actually did a lot of the work. They did most of it. Um, that's why they became the core team. But then as time has moved on and we've had other volunteers, other developers, other people working on things, the core team has kind of slid into this back role of handling the administravia things of Monero, mostly holding money and dispersing money to people who... Uh, who need it from the from the ccs or in my case from the general fund so um this is kind of changed in the community where now we're more work group focused you know heck the community work group is is hosting this Moneroversary. so um that's kind of been the major changes community wise i would say there i may be missing some things um Maybe I should have put them in my, when, when Justin probably told me to talk about the history of Monero, he probably envisioned that I had that stuff in my thing, but I, I just got, I'm just so fascinated by the early days, the early days of man, you know, that uh, this was the stuff I wanted to focus on. It's really funny. Monero is a scam. So when we say Monero is a scam, we really mean it. Uh, we, we are not, we are a scam no longer, but uh, we were a scam. We have our roots in, in, in scams. And you know what? I think that's something we should hold with pride. Um, that's our lineage. That's our heritage. That's the tribe we come from. We come from, we have scam in our veins. 
running through our veins, I guess I should say. So that's my time. I am going to hop off this stage. We got some other great, interesting stuff for you. Uh, thank you so much for listening to me. Bye, everybody.